This video will focus on the concept of conservation of momentum, which is a very important law in physics. Conservation of momentum says that when no net external force is acting on a system, the total momentum of the system remains constant. What this law doesn't say is that the total momentum of an object remains constant. It's very specific in specifying that it's talking about a system, which is two or more objects. When we have a conservation of momentum problem, we will look at the initial momentum of the system, and we will set it equal to the final momentum of the system. Often, conservation of momentum problems will deal with collisions. There are three types of collisions that we will uh, learn about and then we will discuss. The first type is called an elastic collision. The second type is called an inelastic collision. And the third type is a completely or perfectly inelastic collision. In the first type, for an elastic collision, not only is momentum conserved, but the kinetic energy of the system is also conserved. This is different than just talking about the conservation of energy as a whole, which is always true. This is talking specifically only about kinetic energy being conserved. In the second type, in elastic collisions, only momentum is conserved. In the third type, completely or perfectly in elastic collisions, only momentum is conserved, but what makes these special is the objects stick together. In other words, they have the same final velocity. Now let's look at one of the problems that deals with this conservation of momentum. In this problem, we have two freight cars. Each of them have the same mass. They collide and stick together. One of them was initially moving at 2.2 meters per second and the other one was initially at rest. What is their final speed? Well, we know that the initial momentum of the system has to be equal to the final momentum of the system. This means that the initial momentum of each object, P initial of car A plus P initial of car B, has to be equal to P final of car A plus P final of car B. Well, I know that car B, I'm going to call it, was the one that was initially at rest. That means it has no initial momentum. So the mass of A times the initial velocity of A equals the mass of A times the final velocity of A plus the mass of B times the final velocity of B. This problem specifically says that the two cars stick together. That means that the final velocity of A is equal to the final velocity of B. It also tells me that both cars have the same mass. So the mass of A equals the mass of B. So I'm going to rewrite this equation without some of these subscripts, just to make it look a little, look a little cleaner. I don't need a subscript on mass since it's the same for both. I also don't need a subscript on final velocity since it's the same for both. So you will notice that on the left hand side I have mass times the initial velocity of A and on the right hand side I have 2 times mass times final velocity. Both sides of these equations have mass in them, so I can cancel it out. Even though it's given to us, it's something I do not need. Solving for V final, I find that it is half 
of the initial velocity. The initial velocity was 2.2 meters per second, so the final velocity is 1.1 meters per second. Moving on to another problem. In this one, we have a bullet striking a bag of flour. The bag of flour is on ice and is at rest. The bullet passes through the bag and exits at 275 meters per second. How fast is the bag moving when the bullet exits? Well, again, we know initial momentum equals final momentum, which tells me that the mass of the bullet times the initial velocity of the bullet this is the initial momentum of the bullet, plus the mass of the flower times the initial velocity of the flower. That's the initial momentum of the bag of flour. Equals the mass of the bullet times the final velocity of the bullet, plus the mass of the flower times final velocity of the flower. So here, I've taken the initial momentum of the system and set it equal to the final momentum of the system. It tells me that the bag of flour is initially at rest. So this whole term goes to zero. I'm eventually looking for how fast the bag of flour was moving after the bullet exits. So I'll solve for that quantity mass of the bullet v initial of the bullet minus mass of the bullet v final of the bullet equals mass of flour times v final of flour. All I need to do now is divide by the mass of the flour on both sides. The final velocity of the flour is equal to the mass of the bullet 35 grams, except for we know I need that in kilograms. So 0 0.035 kilograms times the initial velocity of the bullet. It says it's moving at 475 meters per second. Minus the mass of the bullet times the final velocity of the bullet. Again, those are numbers that are given to us. The final velocity of the bullet is 275 meters per second. I divide that by the mass of the flower bag, which is 2.5 kilograms. I find that the final velocity of the bag of flour is 2.8 meters per second. That's a reasonable number. It shouldn't be too high because it's a pretty massive bag of flour. That's about a five pound bag of flour. One more problem for this video. Again, we're referring to that previous bullet. It strikes a 2.5 kilogram steel ball that is at rest. The bullet bounces backward after its collision at a speed of 5 meters per second. How fast is the ball moving when the bullet bounces backward? Just like in the previous problem, we'll talk about this conservation of momentum. I have a mass of the bullet times the initial of the bullet plus the mass of the steel ball times the initial of the steel ball equals mass of bullet v final of bullet plus mass of steel ball v final of steel ball. It tells me the steel ball was initially at rest, so I can cancel that out and make it zero. Just as I did before, I'm solving for v final. Before it was for the flower, this time it's for the steel ball. It'll be similar math in either case. This time, I'm going to simplify my numerator by factoring out the mass of the ball. 
I do this just so I have less numbers to plug into my calculator. So V final of the steel ball is mass of the bullet, which again is 0 .035 kilograms. It still has that same initial velocity of what it previously had, which was 475 meters per second. But this time it tells me that it bounces backward after the collision at a speed of 5 meters per second. The fact that it says backwards means it's in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. So I'm going to plug in a negative 5 meters per second. Divide that by the mass of the steel ball, which is 2.5 kilograms. And then plug it all into my calculator. One thing I will point out is 475 minus negative 5 is the same thing as saying plus 5. This time we find that the velocity of that steel ball is 6.72 meters per second, and that would be forward. The same direction as what the bullet was originally traveling. The big difference between this problem and the last problem was looking at direction. Again, that's something you need to be very careful to pay attention to. This last problem is one that I would like you to try on your own and bring it to school with you tomorrow. You'll notice it talks about a thread holding two carts together. And then afterward, the carts are being pushed apart. One cart has a speed of 27 centimeters per second to the left. It wants to know the velocity of the 4.5 kilogram cart. As you're doing this problem, Think about what these two carts are doing before the string is burned. They're at rest. So what's the initial momentum? You should answer that the initial momentum is zero. Momentum is still conserved, though, so the final momentum must be zero as well. Again, that's final momentum for the system, not for each object. So bring this to class with you tomorrow.